When Donald Trump became president, he promised to shake up the American economy with tax cuts, trade deals, deregulation, energy reform. So here we are at the end of 2018, and what's happened? Let's start with a question of tax reform. Ed, this was a centerpiece of the president's policy, big tax cuts. And there's an argument that says when you have big tax cuts, you actually get more tax take because the economy booms. What's actually happened on the corporate tax side? Well, that is very interesting. As you say, it was very clear that that was meant to stimulate the economy, create jobs, and particularly do that by getting corporations to invest more and by helping corporations. It quite probably has had some of those effects. However, what it really hasn't done is led to an increase in tax revenues. And if you look here, I've been looking at the data, these are the numbers for tax revenues paid by the S&P 500 companies. So that's essentially the largest 500 listed companies in the country. And this is comparing the first nine months of 2017 with the first nine months of 2018. In the first time nine months of 2017, those companies paid a total of $265 billion in tax. These are a fact set numbers calculated this. Uh, first nine months of 2017, they paid $265 billion. And in the first nine months of this year, they paid $223 billion. So that's actually a 16% drop in tax revenues. So you could say this tax reform may have had various good effects. One effect it has definitely not had is led to an increase in tax payments. And clearly, for people who are starting to get worried about the level of government borrowing, the state of the, the budget deficit. This is one thing that people, I think, might want to be a bit concerned about, is that it's pretty clear companies are paying less tax now and may well be paying less tax in the future as well. Well, one thing that's remarkable about that is that this has happened during a period of strong economic growth, when normally corporate tax receipts go up. And you have to ask, you know, given that the budget deficit is slated to go through a trillion dollars soon, what that's going to mean for the debt in 2019. Yeah, exactly. We, we, I mean, just, we, you know, we were in a period of, we, uh, we've been in a long period of expansion, and actually during that same, uh, you know, comparing the nine months to nine months, profits, pre-tax profits, were up 13% in that period, and then tax payments were down 16%. So as you say, that I think gives you a very clear sense of, uh, you know, how even at a time of, uh, of you know, very good time for, for companies, uh, tax revenues were falling, and that's certainly a, a warning sign for the future. That's remarkable. Well, here's another one of the charts that I love, which is looking at trade. Now, Donald Trump is obsessed with the trade deficit with China. He vowed to cut it. In fact, we've just had data showing that in the autumn of 2018, the trade deficit hit a record $55.5 billion. And here is why. As we can see, during 2018, Essentially, exports have trended down slightly after tariffs were introduced, but imports of goods from China into America have surged. Any idea why that is, Ed? Well, so one of the things clearly is that strength of the US economy we, we've been talking about. Um, the, just the US economy has continued to grow, demand's been healthy, continued to, continued to suck in imports. Uh, strength of the dollar may have had something to do with it. Um, Chinese uh, supplies remained pretty competitive. Um, are there other things going on, do you think? Well, I personally think another fact, of course, it may be front-loading. Some people say basically companies are rushing to buy goods before more right. tariffs come in because we've had 10% tariffs introduced on many products already, but they're talking about 25% in the future, and so they're trying to get ahead of that. I rather suspect, though, in some ways another problem is that in America, the White House can't order companies like Walmart or others to stop buying from China, and it's pretty hard for them to try and change their supply chains around quickly. In China, by contrast, there's much more state control over where Chinese companies procure their goods. And so the suspicion is that perhaps they're doing a better job of redirecting their trade than American companies are. That is very interesting. And certainly I've heard, I mean, anecdotal evidence only, but I've certainly heard US companies that sell to China saying that they've had sort of indications, hints from Chinese companies that, well, we're not really going to buy for you th from you at the moment. It's just not kind of a politically sensible thing for us to be doing, even if, as you say, kind of the direct orders haven't quite gone out, there's still that kind of chilling effect. America is still a democracy, and those companies have the right to do what they want. Oil. Let's talk about oil, because that's a fascinating area where, again, the president has taken enormous pride in trying to make America energy self-sufficient and cut its dependency on the Middle East. What's actually happened? 
The president has uh, very kind of high-flown rhetoric about wanting energy dominance. Past presidents have talked about energy independence. President Trump wants energy dominance. And he's talked about uh, and, and actually done some things in terms of deregulation and trying to free things up and make things uh, better for the oil industry. But actually, if you look at the data, the kind of the, the growth in oil production really started um, back in 2016, uh, even before President Trump was elected. Um, it, U.S. oil production was hit quite hard by the um, slump in oil prices of 2014. It took some time to recover after that, but as prices began to recover in 2016, so production began to pick up as well. And then as prices really took off uh, into this year, then the, uh, the uh, U.S. oil industry absolutely started roaring ahead. It's been fantastic for all of those shale producers, particularly out in Texas, um, when we had U.S. oil prices up above $75 a barrel. That's been absolutely fantastic for them. That's uh, enabled them to... Um, it's not hugely profitable ever, to be fair, the shale industry, but it's been closer to being profitable at $75 a barrel than it has been in the past. And so we've seen actually record growth in U.S. oil production. It's been absolutely tearing ahead. And so um, that's been something which has been a very dramatic development, has made the U.S. the world's largest producer of crude oil. So it's, it's kind of spectacular. But as I say, the, uh, the link between that and any policy actions actually taken by Donald Trump is a bit more questionable. Well, it's certainly been a fascinating year, 2018. Um, a mixed bag of gifts for investors in terms of tax, trade, and oil. What will 2019 hold? Let's wait and see. But happy holidays.